uh, the comments made by you uh, till uh, so far i could not i was going on wishing you good afternoon good afternoon but i was waiting for uh, for a response from your side you know the chat box was not showing actually and just now i can we can see yes thank you very much for all of you to all of you for uh, approving it that i am uh, visible and audible to you clear and uh, yes i will be talking to you about the project certainly i will do that but before that yesterday as i told you i was talking to you about the powers of the both houses of the indian parliament and as i told you the powers as i have shown you that i usually prefer a comparative study and i have done in that way only clear and one more thing i told you was less one more thing i told you was less was special powers special powers you know with regard to the special powers with regard to the special powers children um we will specially talk about the rajya sabha why because you know that uh, as we have seen the comparative study yesterday and we have come to the conclusion that uh, on the basis of the uh, evaluation of the powers of the both of the two houses we came to the conclusion that the lok sabha enjoys a much more powerful position in comparison to the rajya sabha but you know uh, although the lok sabha is a more powerful house in india but uh, there are other houses like uh, the house of lords if you imagine of the house of lords in america or usually all the other houses upper houses apart from america not in america the american upper house which is known to be the senate i am not talking about that usually in a democracy wherever there is a bicameral legislature that means two houses of the legislature you find that the upper house is usually a less powerful house in comparison to the lower house as i have told you yesterday itself that the lower house actually represents the people of the country isn't it so in a democracy the sovereign power is in the hands of the people of the country so usually the lower house is more powerful but if you see if you make a comparison of the upper houses of the world um, again i am mentioning with the, uh, accepting rajya uh, C- american senate you will find that the rajya sabha you cannot call it to be completely powerless why because you know the rajya sabha of india enjoys certain special powers now what are the special powers first of all means creation and abolition i suppose you know the meaning of these two words create means to uh, make new form formation and abolish means to suspend or to remove clear so the rajya sabha of india you know it has the power to create and abo- abolish all india services ias what you call as all india services indian administrative service all those posts they can be created if the rajya sabha feels that the number of all india posts is lesser in number we need some more then it is only the rajya sabha who can create those posts and if the rajya sabha feels that there are too many posts of all the of this kind that all india level posts there are too many of them we don't need so many of them so it is only the rajya sabha which can abolish them that means remove such posts so you can see that this is one of the special power of the rajya sabha the second one
you know, again, uh, I say I'm very, I'm, I'm very, uh, what you say, I'm not satisfied with the kind of syllabus which have been framed for you for this particular year because federalism is such an important chapter. Why this chapter has been removed for your, from your syllabus, I don't know the reason behind it. Whoever has done it has done a blunder, I suppose. Because here again, you need to understand what is a state list and a fed, uh, union list. As I told you that in a federation, as India is structurally federal, you know there are two sets of government. As I told you yesterday, as I discussed yesterday, that at the central level you have the central government or the union government, which we are actually discussing, and at the state level you have the state government, clear. And under the state government you have a set of local self-government institutions. Like for the, gram, for the villages you have the Gram Panchayat or the Panchayat Samiti or the Zilla Parishad and for the cities or towns, you, for the urban areas you have municipal corporation and municipalities, clear. So that is a part of the state government. Now in a federation, you know, how is this division of power made? In a federation, you know, the division of powers are actually made by the constitution itself, by the constitution itself and this power is actually divided into three lists and children those who have studied in this school and I was your teacher that time, I have uh, given you notes also and I have discussed also that in a federation the powers are actually divided among three lists, union list, state list and concurrent list. Over the union list, which government enjoys power? The central government. Over the state list, the state government. The concurrent list, both the central and the state government. And finally, there is another list, which is known as the residuary list, which means that any of the subjects which is not included in either of these three lists, they are included in that particular list and the union government has power over that particular list. Now you can understand why this chapter of federalism is so important in order to understand the government system in India. Clear? So what a blunder has been made, you can understand. But if you remember the part which I have taught you for class 10, there is a chapter on federalism, the second chapter itself, and there I have made you, I've discussed, and I have given you notes to that respect. If you have your copies, you can follow that also for this part. Now, so it is the power of the Rajya Sabha. If it feels, for example, take for example, like health. Health is a subject uh, which can be, which is, uh, okay, let me take much more easier topic. For example, transport. Transport is a subject which is of belongs which belongs to the state list. Clear. Now, usually the state government makes laws over this subject. But if the central government feels that all the roads in India they need to be uh, what to say repaired or certain new network of roads must be established in India or created or constructed in India. So what happens? Now the central government will be making laws for that particular subject. But this subject is included in the state list. Union government or the central government cannot make laws over it. So now the central government can ask the Rajya Sabha that please transfer that particular subject from the state list to the union list. And for a maximum of one year, that subject can be transferred from the state list to the union list and the central government can make laws over that subject for one year. After that, it can again be transferred to the state list. So this is the special power of the Rajya Sabha. These are the most important, uh, two, sorry, two important special powers of the Rajya Sabha. Together with this, there is another one which I have already mentioned and what is that one? that the Rajya Sabha of India, as I told you yesterday, is a 
quasi permanent chamber which means that it is not dissolved all at once so whenever the lok sabha is not there or the lok sabha has been dissolved the lok sabha is not functioning so who will carry on who will carry on the functions it is the rajya sabha so or even if the lok sabha is not there the rajya sabha will carry on with the functions of the government until and unless the next lok sabha is elected so these are the special powers of the rajya sabha which makes the rajya sabha not completely powerless clear anyone is having a problem with the special powers of the rajya sabha okay okay now uh, the lok sabha as already mentioned it is a very powerful house even when you know there are certain powers which are given to the lok sabha also special powers and some of them you can if i tell you now you can realize that if you want to change the name of a state the lok sabha has the power as has happened in india several times you can see that bombay has changed to mumbai calcutta to kolkata madras to chennai so these this particular part belongs to the lok sabha together with this it can change the boundaries of the state which is very uh, which is again an example which you can realize which is that you know in india you can find that once a union territory now it is declared as a state or it was a state it is declared into a union territory a territory for example goa once upon a time it was a union territory and now it has been moved to the status of a state so who has this power it is the lok sabha who can do this clear so these are the special powers of both the houses clear so tomorrow i will start with the executive part and today one more thing i will like to tell you about the project and what is that then the topic of the project which i have given you is like organs of the government of india clear write it of india so the first page will be as you do on the first page you will write your name roll number whatever it is second page will be the preface one third one will be the introduction and remember in this introduction part you will men mention that that part you will mention that as as i told you the government is actually made up of three organs the legislature executive judiciary you will mention this part in the introduction part together with more sentences clear now from the next page what you will do is that after introduction you will go to the body part and there the first heading will be legislature and then you will start legislature what is the indian legislature known as what is its term what is its composition who is its head and the powers of both the houses first you do with rajya sabha then you do with lok sabha and then you complete there and then you move to the next one that is the executive clear oh ladakh kashmir is okay somshu bro you don't need to worry about those that is the power of the lok sabha and uh, with regard to kashmir we have nothing to say because you know kashmir was enjoying a space uh, it was enjoying a special status until now they are having a problem they did not accept 
whatever was done to them. Clear? Still people are protesting against the removal of Article 370. So don't, don't go for controversial issues there. Clear? Okay, thank you very much.